Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in my series on the Linux command line. The topic for today is going to be slightly more advanced file options. We're going to you're going to learn about copying, moving, viewing the head and tail, finding files and what exactly control C does on the command line. So let's dive right into it, shall we? As you can see right now I'm in root. So let's quickly jump into my home folder and from there we'll jump into documents. You'll notice I've gone ahead and recreated the test directory from the last episode. I figured you, pro you guys probably didn't need to see me do that again. So we'll go into test and I've also recreated hello world.txt. So now that we have a file, let's see what, what exactly we can do with it. Now, there are two rather interesting commands when it comes to particularly text files that you can use, and that is the head command and the tail command. Now, what these commands do is they will write the first or last several lines of text in that file directly to the command line. So if we wanted to see what was in hello world.txt, we could write head hello world.txt, enter, and as you can see, it writes the first, in this case there's only one line in the file, but it writes the first couple lines and tail hello world dot txt will write the last few lines. Not the best example, hold on. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. All right. This should, because honestly I'm kind of curious too now, exactly how many lines each one will write. Uh, we'll save it as yes, and save it as test.txt. Alright, so if we do head test.txt, we'll write the first 10. Alright, so, and tail test.txt, will write the last 10. Alright, so they write 10 each. That's useful if you want to see what is a, what a file is without actually having to open it. But let's clean this up a little bit. The clear command will wipe your uh, terminal. Although note that it doesn't wipe it completely. It will give you a blank terminal like this, but if you scroll up, all the stuff will still be there. It just sort it just I guess gives you fresh lines down to where you don't see any of it anymore. Alright, so let's list again. We have test and hello world. Let's move test. So the command for moving is mv, move. And then you type in your file name and then you type in where you want it to go. Boom. Test is no longer here, but if we go back to documents, oops, there it is. Let's move it back. All right. Again, it moved back into the test folder. You, you'll notice that I typed, I just had to type test, the name of the directory, I'm moving it out of documents, but I had to type the full extension when moving it into documents because there is if you just type in documents it's going to search the directory you're in for a directory called documents and that wouldn't exist and nothing would have happened so let's go back to test and as you can see we are indeed in test list contents all right move can be used for another relatively cool thing if we type in move test.txt and then type in test.txt. Notice I can't, or let's do something a little more dramatic. Um, how about good? I don't know. I'm not very creative. .txt and hit enter. You can use the move command to rename your files. So in this case, good test became good. Okay. Now let's try out copy. What well, move is like cut it removes the file from the directory it's in and places it in another directory. 
If you want to keep the file where it is, but also put it somewhere else, you need the copy, which is cp. So let's move good.txt into root kids. No, I'm sorry. Root home kids documents. Okay, so you notice it is still here, but it's also there. So I successfully copied it, left one copy of the file in test and the other copy in documents. And as you saw in my previous video, you can just remove it like that. All right. Now, let's say you knew what your file was called, but you didn't know where it was, which is perfectly reasonable. So let's just get really far away from it, as far away from it as you can get here in root. So you know you have a file that goes by the name of good.txt, but you're not sure where it is. That's what the find command is for. If you type in find, and then you have to type in where to look. You, if you know about where it is, you can def definitely go to narrow the search parameters. So I know that it's in kids. So if we type in root home kids. So it'll search everything within the kids directory, the kids home directory, for a file. Now, you need to set in the criteria. In this case, we're going to search by name. You can search by permissions, file size, just about anything. But we know what it's called, so we'll search name. And we know that it the file is called good.txt. Now note that if your file name has a space in it, you can't put a space in the file name because it's going to read it as two separate modifiers. Modifiers in Linux are separated by a space. What you do is you put a minus where the space should be or an underscore. I think for file names it's an underscore and in commands it's a minus. All right, so we know it's called good.txt. For what to do, uh, you could leave it blank. You could, if you wanted to, type in print, but you don't have to because print is the default. You can do other things. I'm not entirely sure what all they are, but uh, I think you can uh, write it to a file if you wanted to or do all kinds of cool stuff like that, but I'm not entirely solid on any of that just yet. Hit enter, and there it spits out exactly where it is. Home, kids, documents, test, good. Now, there's one thing to note. If you were to search your entire computer, so I'm using just root and not root home kids for something that goes by the name of good.txt, that's going to take a while. So if you want to stop it, control C. And there, it cuts, it cuts it out. As you can see, control C is your catch-all. No matter what you're doing on the command line, you can probably stop it by typing control C. It will end whatever process you're running, which is very useful if you're running a process that you don't want to run anymore or if it's taking a lot longer than you had intended. Just be careful because sometimes if you cut a process off halfway through, it'll mess everything up. So you want to watch what processes you actually stop using control C. Okay, let's recap move allows you to move a file into any directory if you're moving although if you're moving backwards you have to specify the entire directory if you're moving forwards you just have to or the entire address of the directory if you're just moving forwards just specify the name of the directory move will also let you change the name of your file copy will move your file into a new directory while leaving a copy of it in the original directory. Find No, I'm sorry, it's search where to look then criteria and then what to do. That will allow you to search and at least for anything you'll want to do, write the location of any file you could possibly want. 
if, I don't know, sometimes people lose files on the computer, I've done it before, this will let you find it. And I might add it works a heck of a lot faster than the search utility that comes bundled with Windows. <laughs> you saw that there. It was almost instant. When, if I just narrowed it down to a couple, or narrowed it down to which user the file belonged to. Control C. Control C will terminate any process. Head and tail. Well, that'll let you look inside of a file without actually opening it. And clear will wipe the contents of your command line, making it all neat and tidy. Thank you for watching episode two. Next episode, we're going to get into some, we'll call them administration, administrator processes that you can run on your command line. So once again, I want to thank you for watching. Have a great day.